Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher here at Sweetwater Sound, and today I'm gonna to explain what is a MIDI CC. Well, the CC either stands for Continuous Controller or Control Change, and what is it? It's a MIDI message, it's a channel voice message, but just quickly, a channel voice message is all of those kind of MIDI messages that say what note you're playing, or how fast you're playing that note, or if you're doing aftertouch, or pitch bend, or mod wheel. Um, those are all different kinds of channel voice messages. And the word channel is in there because those messages messages can be on any of 16 MIDI channels. So you can send a CC message to one keyboard and you can send a different CC message to a different keyboard as long as they're on two different MIDI channels, they're each gonna get the message independently. So one of the things to understand about MIDI is that it goes from zero to 127. And there's a beauty in that, in that it doesn't really matter what controller you're using, if you're using a mod wheel or a slider, if you decide to use the slider instead of the mod wheel, if you make the slider be the same continuous control number that the mod wheel was, this will act like a mod wheel. You could do it to a knob, you can do it to a slider, you can do it to a button. Um, anything that you can choose what CC it sends lets you choose what it's gonna control. Now on the receiving end, you can say on any parameter that can be controlled by MIDI, you could say what CC number controls that particular thing. And so I'm gonna show you that as well. And today's kind of different in that I have two larger controllers, but one tiny synthesizer. This is the Nano Box by 1010 Music. It's the Fireball. It's an eight voice synthesizer that has tons of control, tons of parameters, and most of those parameters can be controlled by CC numbers. So I thought it'd be fun to have that little thing and yet to this big thing that doesn't make any sound at all. This is the Novation 61 SL Mark III. I've also got the Native Instruments Complete Control M32. All they do is send MIDI. And the secret to not going crazy with MIDI messages is to have a computer, like a laptop, set up with software that shows exactly what MIDI messages are coming in. It's a lifesaver, trust me on this. So on the Mac, I'm using MIDI Monitor by a company called Snoise. Uh, it's free. Uh, there are equivalents on PC like MIDI Aux and others. Just look for a free MIDI monitor. So if I turn the first knob of the complete control, I can see I'm sending 14 and I am getting different values on the far right you can see there and I'm going to low values and high values and just moving around. And in every case, you can see that it's channel one, that it's CC number 14 and, and what the values are on the far side. And everything I do from pitch bend to mod wheel to note numbers, all of that's gonna show up because they're all different kind of MIDI messages and MIDI monitor shows you those messages. So where's the sound coming from? Because as you know, this is a controller that makes no sound. This is a controller that makes no sound. But I happen to have an amp running here. So this is the beautiful Hammond B3X. And this is an amazing organ. If I go here, you can see the keys. And if I play the keys, you'll see them. And I could change the Leslie. And that's because this mod wheel is CC number one. And if I go over here in the app, I can see that the Leslie speed is indeed CC number one. Now watch this. If I made it 14 instead, now this knob, which I had figured out is running 14, is gonna do the Leslie. So it's important to understand, all of this stuff is changeable. All of the 127 MIDI CC numbers all go from zero to 127. So if this knob goes from zero to 127, that slider goes from zero to 127, both will do the same things as long as I tell it to listen to that message instead of that message. You just change the CC number and that'll start working. I could make Aftertouch do Leslie. I could make Pitch Bend do Leslie. All of it is up to me depending on how I choose what I'm sending and choose what things are listening to. Okay, so now I'm going to use the Novation 61 SL Mark III. Again, just a controller, doesn't make sound, but I'm coming out of the MIDI out and I'm going into the MIDI dongle that is the MIDI in of the Nano Box, which means that I can play it. Let's 
say I wanted control over that slow sweep that's going. Let's say I wanted to go from slow to fast. Well, that's an LFO. And so I come over here and I go to the LFO section and I can see that there's a rate and there's these dots over here. So it means that I can add a MIDI assignment. And so I could have an envelope or some of the internal things, but instead I'm gonna use a CC number. And then when I do CC, you'll see that the learn button comes on. And all I gotta do is hit the learn and turn the knob I want to do something. So I hit learn, I turn this knob, and right away I now know that CC number 21 is gonna work this thing. So let's try it. Let's see if I'm changing LFO speeds. Now let's say I wanted control over how bright the filter was. So my next one I have here, it's at CC22, I'll leave it at that. So I go to filter and I go to where the filter setting is. And right now I have several sources, but I'm gonna change one of them. I'm gonna change this X, which is one of the sliders on here, but I'm gonna change it to CC and hit learn and turn this knob. And then I'm gonna go to the other filter And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to change the Y also to CC22. So I just go to CC and, well, actually I'll do it on a different one. I'll do 23. So I learn it from here. I hit learn, I learn it, and it's learned. So now these three knobs should do something interesting. So here we go. If I move the mod wheel, you can hear that it's animating an LFO. <laughs> but let's say I wanted to use a different CC number. Right now I'm using mod wheel, which is CC number one, but let's try it. So I'm gonna to go to LFO and I'm gonna to go to rate and I see that nothing's controlling the rate. So it's a static rate, but I'm gonna to go to CC, hit learn, and I'm going to move this new knob here. And now, I should be able to change the rate. Well, let's say I wanted to do something really different. Let's say I wanted to change the pitch. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to pitch and I'm coming over here and I'm gonna do CC again. I'm gonna hit learn and I'm gonna do this new knob here, and now I should be able to change pitch. So like I said, some of the synthesizers have their CC numbers baked in, you can't change them. And so on your controller, you will wanna make those numbers match. So how do you find out what they are? Well, you get with each product a MIDI implementation chart and it shows you every controller number that does something to that synth and how it's used. Um, this is almost always found in a download where your owner's manuals can be downloaded. So you get your MIDI implementation chart and you go, oh, I see that uh, vibrato is on this or that the filter cutoff is this number. And then you set it to that number and you move it. And if you really wanna learn a lot more about how CCs can be assigned to other synthesizer parameters, you should watch my synth clip series and we'll put a link down below for that. And I have currently like 35 episodes that hone in on very specific things, including assigning CC numbers and using matrix for modulation and all that. If you have any further questions about the 1010 Music Nanobox Fireball Synthesizer or the Novation 61 SL Mark III Controller Keyboard or the Native Instruments Complete Control M32, or the IK Multimedia Hammond B3X application, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching.
Thank you.